In this video, we're going to be talking about describing the shape of a distribution. So when we're talking about describing the shape of a distribution, be sure that you're focused on the general overall shape and not individual points. So we might be looking at the shape of a dot plot or maybe a histogram of the distribution. We can also actually look at uh, box and whiskers plots and, and use them to help describe the shape as well. But usually the words that we use are more describing the dot plot or histogram. And often we'll say it has a certain shape even though it may not be a perfect match. For example, uh, uniform would require all the bars to be the same height. If they're just almost the same height but a little bit off, we would still would call it uh, uniform or at least approximately uniform. Um, symmetric would require it to be a perfect mirror image around a line that we draw in the middle. If that's not exactly perfectly true but close, we'll still call it a symmetric distribution. Technically, we should probably say approximately symmetric, but usually we won't bother using the word approximate there. So some commonly uh, identified distribution shapes that we're going to talk about a little bit in this video are uniform distributions, mound-shaped, symmetric, skewed, and bimodal. So let's see what we mean by each of those things. So if it's uniform, what pattern are you going to see in the box plot and what pattern are you going to see in the histogram? In the histogram, you're going to see all the bars exactly the same height. So in this case, there, there are uh, five data values, all with probability one-fifth, all with uh, probability one-fifth or relative frequency one-fifth. Um, I kind of use that term interchangeably there. Uh, I should have said relative frequency because we're talking about a distribution, but it's also kind of probability in this sense. If we were to draw an item from this distribution at random, it would have a probability of one-fifth of being a one, or one-fifth of being two, and so forth. So relative frequencies and probabilities are pretty closely related. And here's a box plot for that. I use the Tukey method in this case for, for determining the box plot. But you notice that the distance from the minimum to Q1 and the distance from Q1 to Q to the median, Q2, and the distance from the median to Q3 and the distance from Q3 to the maximum are all the same lengths. Okay, so that it's, it's evenly spaced out in the box plot. So you can see that on the box plot and you can see it in the, in the histogram. Another very important type is called symmetric. And actually the last one was, was symmetric as well. It's, uh, if it's symmetric, it's centered on the mean. And it turns out the mean, median, mid-range, and mid-quartile all give you exactly the same value if it's exactly symmetric. If it's nearly symmetric, then the mean, median, mid-range, and mid-quartile should all be nearly the same value. Now, the way you can see this on a histogram, if you find the mean, median, mid-quartile, all those are the same value. If you find the mean, where I've got the, the red uh, line here, if you take right down the middle of that bar and drew a vertical line, then the left side is a mirror image of the right side. So it is a so what one side of the mean is a reflection of the other side, and that's what we, you know, that's what we use the word symmetric in geometry, and we're using the same word here. Now it's the same thing is true for the box plot. If you take the median, which is also the mean and drew a vertical line through that, the left side of the box plot should be a mirror image of the right side of the box plot. And if you look, that was also true of this, this one here. So this uniform was also uh, symmetric. But we can also talk about something called mound shape. In the uniform, all the bars are basically are the same height, or at least approximately so, if it's approximately uniform. But if you talk about mound shape, not only is it symmetric, centered on the mean here, but it's mounded up in the middle. And so by whether that by by that what do we mean? We mean that the highest value is in the middle. So the mode, which is the highest bar, is also the mean and the median and the mid range. They're all in the mid quartile. They're all five of those measures of central tendency. They are exactly the same. So um 
So you get the highest bar in the middle, and the other higher bars are also towards the middle, and it starts to trail off into the, what we call tails to the left and to the right with smaller and smaller bars as you go out. That's called mound-shaped. And an important, very important type of distribution that we'll learn a little bit later on a lot about is called a normal distribution. And a normal distribution has this symmetric mound-shaped type of distribution. This is from a what's called a binomial distribution. Now, what does that look like in the uh, in the histogram? We just explained that tall bar in the middle, taller symmetric, um, taller bars in the middle, smaller bars as you go out to both sides. How does that look like in a box plot? Well, most of the data is mounted up near the middle, and so what you're going to see is you're going to see a smaller box and longer whiskers. Okay, so notice that the, the whisker here, in this case, is even longer than the entire box of the box plot. So you're going to see that middle fourth, the middle half of the data is going to be more concentrated, and the upper quarter and the lower quarter of the data are going to be more spread out. Okay, that would be a mound shaped, and if these, if, if it's still this box plot is a mirror image on this side from this side, then that's, again, that's a symmetric distribution. So symmetric mound shape. Now, if it's not symmetric, it's it has what we call a skewness to it. It's it's a non-zero skewness. So skewness is a measure of deviation from perfect symmetry. Now, the skewness is actually a a statistic, just like uh, the mean or standard deviation that you can compute for a data set. Uh, at this point, I'm not going to worry about actually computing it, but you know, a lot of statistical programs can compute. Uh, the skewness. And if the number that you compute for skewness turns out to be zero, then we call that no skewness or zero skewness, and that's perfectly symmetric. If the skewness is close to zero but not actually equal to zero, we'll still identify the distribution as symmetric, even though it's technically it's only approximately symmetric, uh, but it's still more or less symmetric if the skewness is close to zero. Now you say if it's positive skewness or skewed to the right, if they if this skewness measure that you can compute is a positive number, that's positive skewness, that's skewed to the right, and that means the longer tail is on the right side. I'll show you a picture in, in just a second here. Negative skewness is skewed to the left or the long tail on the left. Now the larger the absolute value of the skewness measure, the farther it is from being symmetric. So if the absolute value of the skewness is fairly large, then the data is said to be significantly skewed. So if the distribution is significantly skewed, or if it has outliers on one side of the mean, then the mean will be on the side of the long tail, or on the side of the outliers from the, me from the median, or from the median. And the median is a better measure of the center than the mean. So if it's skewed, whichever way it's skewed, the mean will be on that side of the median. So let's look at some pictures here. So this is an example of something that's skewed to the right. So the bulk of the data is actually to the left, larger bars on the left. And the longer tail of the smaller bars will trail out to the right here. Okay, so in the histogram, the longer tail of the smaller bars will trail out to the right if it's right skewed or positively skewed. In the box plot, that means the longer whisker is on the right. So see, you've got a shorter whisker to the left and a longer whisker to the right. In fact, you even notice in the box plot, uh, it's a little bit, this is maybe in our way here, but if you notice that the distance from Q1 to Q2, the, from the Q1 to the median, that is, and from the median up to the Q3, if you compare them, this one from Q1 to the median is smaller than the one from the median to Q3. And then the upper whisker is even longer still. Okay, and so we get a, this is what we call uh, skewed to the right or positively skewed. And notice the mean, which in this case is about 16, and the median, which is 14, are in the order. So when you're skewed to the right, the mean is to the right of 
the median. So this longer tail has a tendency to pull that mean up. But if you look, most of the data is kind of centered more over in this area. Okay. And so the median right here is a better measure really of center than the mean in this case. Although it's really a good practice to report both the mean and the median. And in fact, that this would tell you since the mean is a little above the median, they're not too far off. So they're kind of near the same center. But it does, it is definitely above the, the mean is definitely above the median. So we definitely should see some right skewing to the data, which we, we do. Here's some, um, not as many bars, but it's skewed to the, uh, to the left. Okay. So if you notice what happens here, in this case, the Q3 and the median are the same value. They're both 9. So a fourth of the data basically is, is right here pretty much at 9. And you have a fourth in here, and then a fourth in here, and a fourth down here. So basically, the mean is a little bit, not a lot, but a little bit below the median, 8.6 for the mean, 9 for the median. So we should see a little skewed here. So out here, we have some bars that are not zero height, but are very small height out here. So extremely small bar here at 0 and 1. We can hardly see it. You can barely see these bars at 2, 3, and then 4. Now at five, very small bar, and then the bars get bigger over here. And it kind of cuts off right here at 10 as the highest bar. So again, the higher data, most of the data is, is to the right, but we say it's skewed to the left because the long tail is out to the left. So on the box plot, the longer whisker is to the left, shorter whisker to the right, and in the histogram, the long tail is to the left. So that's skewed data. Another type of distribution we might talk about is bimodal type. And this happens when you have two different modes, or at least two different local maxima. If it has two modes, then the highest bar occurs, that height occurs in two different bars. And, but, it, but it could have two local maxima. It could be that maybe one of these bars is a little bit lower than the other one. But we still might call it a bimodal type of shape at least. Because basically what's happening is you've got one mound shape here. And you've got another mound shape here. And these two data sets have been kind of mixed together. And so this is a really good indication that you're mixing together two different populations. Um, and it should be separated into groups. Maybe if we're measuring heights of adults in the United States, maybe you've got one, you might have something like this as bimodal because you might have women here and men here, and maybe they shouldn't be mixed together. They should be separated out as two different distributions. There's definitely going to be some tall women over here and some short men over here, but you're going to have uh, maybe two different mound shape distributions mixed together. Or maybe you're looking at at uh, a group of salaries, and here you have your uh, your line workers, and here you have maybe middle management, and you see that those maybe should be separated out as different different uh, examples. So that's that's just a couple examples, but if you see this kind of a picture, uh, that's what we call bimodal, and the the thing that you should be thinking to yourself is, wait a minute, I probably have two subgroups here that I need to uh, separate out, or at least there's a good chance of that. So those are several different shapes that we can look at. And remember, we're not focused on specific bars, uh, but we're uh, but looking rather at the overall shape.